Hi. This time I wanted to start with a few trivia questions. One, in which city did I find a fine deli restaurant downtown? The answer is not New York. Two, which wild animals roam the streets of Jerusalem? And, true or false, more than 300 new North American immigrants arrived in Israel this week. Don't go anywhere. All the answers right after this. Shalom and welcome to this week's edition of Israeli Salad. I'm Yoni Kempinski. Okay, so you've decided to, that nothing will stop you from coming to visit Israel. But you're still troubled by one thing. What will you eat? How will you cope without the donuts, the frozen yogurt, the bagels, and the pastrama? You should know that in the past years, many restaurants and stores with international foods have opened here in Israel. I went to visit the Hess Delicacies restaurant in Jerusalem and met the owner, Marcel Hess. Marcel Hess, whose family is in the business of fine deli since 1795, opened a few years ago a fine deli factory in the city of Ra'anana. However, when Marcel and his family immigrated to Israel, Marcel felt he needed something else. The day I came on Aliyah, I realized I was missing cultural life, I was missing social life. So very, very fast, I told my wife, I want to go to Jerusalem, even everybody said, you're crazy, in these times, open downtown, where everybody closes, you must be crazy. I said, I believe in the future, and I love Jerusalem. And I can't believe that a city like Jerusalem will not have a life in downtown Jerusalem. Someday it will come back. I am here. The day before I opened, there was a bomb attack in Rehov It was the first bomb attack in which a girl was involved. I came there. I gave first aid, I returned to my restaurant. From this first day, I saw this is Israel, Jerusalem is Israel, Jerusalem has cultural life, Jerusalem is international. This is the town, this is the city, this is a style of life which I am happy with it. The truth is that after all this idealism, I got quite hungry. Pastrami, corn beef sandwich, you have a menu with steaks, with wheat cutlets from the grill. We live of pan fried, Cornish ham, again, totally homemade. If it's Hungarian style gulasch soup, if it's German style green can soup, if it's uh, the traditional chicken beef, it's Kneidel soup. All these items you find here. Marcel also spoke of his wide variety of customers non observant Jews who enjoy coming to a place which sells quality meat, Orthodox customers looking for stricter kosher supervision, and people who became religious but remember the taste of pastrama and cold cuts, which were not kosher, and now they could eat these delicacies in accordance to Jewish law. In Cape Town, South Africa, the Jewish community is conducting research regarding the Jews in South Africa. I'm joined now by our weekly overseas correspondent, Jerry Orlovitz from Cape Town. Shalom, Jerry. Shalom, Yoni. How are you doing? Anah, Baruch Hashem, thank you. Bon thank. So tell me, what is this research about and who's conducting it? There's a project or a program under the way, a research project on South African Jewry, which is under the um, auspices of the Jewish Museum and the Kaplan Center at the University of Cape Town. The aim here is to um, map the entire history of Jewish migration to South Africa, okay, and also to focus on the origins, the migration, the settlement, and finally subsequent migration of the South African Jewish community. Okay, I also understand that you had a very successful Chag of Shavuot there in Cape Town. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, for the first time, uh, you know, many of the shuls ran uh, Tikkun Lel programs, and we worked out, the article here tells us that um, well over a thousand people actually attended Tikkun Lel uh, sessions at the various uh, shuls throughout the uh, Cape Town. Very so, nice. Jerry Orlovitz from Cape Town, our overseas correspondent. Thank you very much and have a great Shabbat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Shabbat shalom. So, why did you come to Israel? 
Hi, my name is Bruno. I'm from Brazil. I'm coming here for my cousin's bar mitzvah. It's going to be in Jerusalem. I'm here to visit my family and visit a little bit of the country. I came for business and to enjoy the Holy Land. More than 300 new immigrants, Olim Chadashim, arrived in Israel as part of the Nefesh Benefesh organization's program to bring families from North America to Israel. Mark Kaplan is at the Ben Gurion Airport with Adam Haley, who immigrated last year with Nefesh Benefesh. Mark? So he made Aliyah last year on Nefesh Benefesh. One year ago today. Happy anniversary to yep. me and my family and everybody else who made Aliyah with us. Happy anniversary. So how's it going? Oh, it's incredible. You know, I would not give this year up for anything in the world. This is the most incredible thing that we've ever done. It's brought our family closer together. Um, the kids are in incredible schools. My daughter has an Israeli accent. It's just, it's an amazing thing to be here. So what advice do you have for anybody trying to make Aliyah now? Do it now, right now. Get on the plane right now. Don't even buy a ticket. Just get up and come home. We need you here. We want you here. We'll give you a big hug and a kiss when you get here. And we'll help you with your absorption. We'll help you find a job. And you'll be part of Israel. Here in, in the land of Israel in our home. Mark, I understand that Prime Minister Ariel Sharon was there to greet uh, the newcomers. Well, yeah, and it seems that the Prime Minister seemed to welcome everybody almost by name. And strangely missing from that list of names was me. But I won't be offended. So from Ben Gurion Airport, this is Mark Kaplan for Israeli Salad. Back to you, Yoni. In Zurich, Chicago, and New York, cows. In Toronto, moose. In Berlin, bears. And in Tel Aviv, penguins and dolphins. These cities chose images that best characterizes them, and hundreds of these animals' statues have been displayed in their streets for short periods of time. The symbol of Jerusalem is the lion. Nobility, power, courage, strength, and leadership are the characteristics of the lion that can fit the characteristics of Jerusalem throughout the centuries. I went to be impressed by a colorful exhibition of more than 80 statues, which will be scattered soon throughout the streets of Jerusalem. The symbol of Jerusalem is the Lion of Judah and uh, we decided to do this uh, street art project in Jerusalem. We, we um, proposed to different artists to uh, decorate each lion in his or her own way. When we sell the lions in an auction, uh, all the funds uh, go to um, some projects for the children of Jerusalem. So remember, next time you visit Jerusalem, you might see a bunch of lions throughout the street. Before getting scared, check if the lion has any drawings on its face or is painted. If so, remember, they're your friendly Jerusalem lions. We'll be back in a moment. So, why did you come to Israel? Um, I came back to Israel to join the army. After 11 years living outside in Mexico City, and I'm um, back, and it's great. At the end of each program, we will try to get a better understanding and insight to one basic Jewish concept. This project has been put together by Machon Meir, the largest Zionistic institute for bringing people closer to Judaism. Rabbi David Samson joins me now from his office in Jerusalem. Shalom, Rabbi Samson. Today I'd like to ask you about the Shabbat candles. Every Shabbat evening, our wives, mothers, and daughters light candles right before the start of the Shabbat. What is the meaning of this ritual, and why do women specifically do this act? Shalom, Yoni. Shalom to all of our watchers and listeners around the world. Uh, before I answer the question, I first uh, have to mention, since this is the first one, that uh, it's a fantastic and a, a, a great idea. And I want to thank the crew of uh, Arut Sheva and all of the people at Mahon Meir for bringing this idea into fruition. And it's great that you're, there are so many moments about all kinds of different concepts in the world, and 
very basic concepts of Judaism are simply not known. Now, getting to your question, how come we, uh, the women light candles on the Sabbath, women and not men? So, there is first of all a very uh, esoteric reason and a very mundane, down-to-earth reason. The Rambam, being a realist, he brings a very clear, definite, mundane reason. And he says that the reason why women light and not men are simply because the women are usually in the house taking care of the matters of the house. And as a result, they're the ones who need the light and they're the ones who will light and have the light for Shabbat. According to the Zohar, there is a much deeper reason why the women are lighting and not men, and that's because the sin of first man occurred just before Shabbat. As we know, first man was created on Friday, and Friday, right before Shabbat, he sinned and was banished from the Garden of Eden. And because Chava, Eve, was the one who instigated the sin, so she is the one who dows the light of the world, and therefore her daughters are the ones who will reignite the light of the world, beginning with every Shabbat. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. So that'll be all for this week. We'd love to receive your ideas and comments by email. In the background, we can hear Shmulik Indig's song, L'Chadodi, based on the Eagles' hit, Hotel California. Now that's what we call elevating the mundane. Have a great Shabbat, a great week, and join us again next week. And I'm um, back, and it's great.